Being able to quickly find the documents, photos, and the reference material that you need to tackle your genealogy research question is so important. If you have a little bit of time to do genealogy, you don't want to be wasting it hunting down that record. If this is your first time here, welcome to Family History Fanatics. I really want to help you prevent your genealogy research from going up in flames or all of the time that you have available to be wasted. When we talk about organizing genealogy research files, we have a lot of papers that we're trying to keep track of. Look on the screen now and let me know which of these records are you trying to organize? Now, I'll be honest. I like to organize using software and online trees. So I use Roots Magic. I'm exploring Family Tree Maker. Both of those systems can help you organize your data. And you can also use online trees to keep track of your information so that you don't always have to download everything to your computer or make printed off copies. The less I have to keep track of, the easier it is for me to research. But we still have paper files and paper documents. So let's talk about five methods that can help you organize your paper files. So the first system is alphabetical. You'll be familiar with an alphabetical organizing system, and it's very similar to being in a doctor's office where they have their files organized by surname and then by first name and middle name, and then if the names are the same, like Robert Paul Geisler, then you can put junior, senior, first, second, third, or a birth date, <laughs> depending on how many people share the same name. But in any case, it is uh, put every file that you have for one particular individual and you have that file for that person and you organize it that way. Now, another way to organize is to organize based on family units. And in our show notes that you're gonna find uh, through your link in the description box, I will share with you some other blog posts and reference material in order to organize in these various ways. The alphabetical one is kind of self-explanatory. Now, the concept of organizing by marriage unit is anytime there is a couple, they get a file, and all records related to them as a couple goes into that file. So you start with a marriage record, then you have records for their children, for residences they live together, for property they own together, property they sell together, you get the idea, and then eventually records of divorces, if that, if that is necessary pension files, death records, and so forth. So the marriage unit, once it begins, then you have a file. It's typically arranged with the surname of the husband and then his name and her name as well on that filing system. Now, there are people who talk about using IDs in association with this marriage unit, but I'm not a fan of that because when you pass on your organizational system, nobody remembers your numbers and the numbers get separated and reconfigured and lost. And I had that happen to me when I inherited my mother's system. She did the 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 ID stuff just disappeared and I was left with a bunch of numbers that didn't make any sense. So I would just stick to the people's names because not only is it more efficient, you don't have to develop this number system and then, oh darn, I gotta put in a 0.5 because I messed up somewhere. You just can organize by the surname and then you can have your file folders organized nice and neat and in a drawer. Another system that many genealogists use, to use are the color-coded generational system. So think of it in this way, you have a pedigree chart and you have, you have yourself and your surname is gonna be a certain color so that goes up the tree. And then when you have this branching of your father's surname, then you have another color, there's your mother's surname all the way back and then the branch for the mother's mother's surname line right there. And so it's a four generation uh, color coding system and you can organize your files in this way. Another advantage of organize your files in this way, this color coded system, is that you can use this color coding system and apply it to a degree to your DNA matches so that your record matches and your DNA 
DNA matches can line up in that way too. Now the color coding system is actually expands that to 16 sets of grandparents, whereas this color coding system has four, but you could get shades of the colors if you can find them in the store. So be sure you check the show notes for how to organize in that system. There's some experts who do a better job of explaining. I just wanted to be able to introduce the concept to you. Now, one of the things I like to do is I like to organize my records by type. I keep all of my photos together. I keep my death certificates together. I keep my marriage certificates together, particularly digitally, but also with paper, because that's kind of how I research. So that's another strategy where you can organize things by type. And maybe it doesn't necessarily work with your filing system, but it could also be an advantage where maybe you take concepts from the four generation and you have your Geislers and all the different record types and the Browns. Those are my two major lines and then they branch off back. So you can have your mother's line, your mother's line, and then you can have all of the records by type and you can have your father's line and all the records by type or branch it to four surnames and do the same thing. Another option to consider. Now I talk a lot about organizing by types digitally and I did that in this video. There'll be a link to it in the description. Now before we get to the next strategy, I want to invite you to become a channel member of YouTube here for Family History Fanatics. This is where we do a lot of deep dive into specific research questions of fans, as well as giving you extra team training and a deep archive of previous in-person conferences we've done, webinar conferences that we've done, and then just special training specific for our viewers. So give that a go if you're interested. In. Now, the final one that I want to tell you about is locality research. Sometimes that you're going to have records that are based on location. And my friend Amy Johnson Crow really likes this depending on the research project she's doing. So she'll have files for a specific county in Ohio. And I kind of like her because I do a lot of research in Ohio myself. But I digress. So a specific county in Ohio, and then she'll put various record types in there related to that location. So be sure to check the show notes. Uh, there will be a link to the blog post show notes, and you'll find um, more about researching it with a geographic filing system. Stop wasting time, and don't let your genealogy research go up, up, up in flames because you're not organized. Find the filing system that writes for you, that works for you. And if you have any other questions, be sure to ask, ask them in the comment section. For more organizational tips, check out this playlist right here. And if you are all caught up with organization, then check out this video, which has been selected with your interest in mind.